Good morning and welcome to the January 16, 2020 Downtown Design Review Committee. Uh, as an order of business, if everybody would silence their cell phones. And the first item on the agenda is roll call. Anthony Blatt. Here. Corey Bates. Present. Gary Jones. Julie Kriegel. Present. Deborah Richards. Mariana Sidor. Rosie Trujillo. You have a quorum. Thank you. Second item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. The minutes are in your packet. And absent any conversation, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve the minutes. That is a Bates Trujillo motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next item is item three, cases withdrawn. There are none. Item four, continuance requests. There are none. Item five, consent docket. There are two items on the consent docket. And unless there's any conversation regarding these two items, I'll entertain a motion on the consent docket. I'll make a motion to accept it. The consent document, docket. Second. It's a Kriegel Bates motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number six is cases for individual consideration. I will abstain. Thank you. Item number six, cases for individual consideration is DTCA 19-00120 P2 at 15 North Robinson Avenue. Yeah, Good morning. Present. Good morning. You might recall we had this on your agenda a few months ago. Um, the scope of work has changed since that time. Originally it came to you for removing the balconies and the railings from the north facade. So what has been added this time is also to remove the doors at the balcony locations and fill the openings with brick and paint to match the existing building and remove the ladder. There's an access ladder up on the top of that facade that goes up to the roof. Um, at your meeting in November, your approval uh, had the following condition to allow the removal of the balconies contingent upon their replacement. The replacement solution being visually identical to the current appearance of the existing balconies. If the applicant wants to provide a solution that is different than the appearance of the current balconies, the project has to go back to the committee. So that is why it is back before you today, because the proposal from the applicant now is to totally remove the balconies and not replace them. Um, we included uh, all of the same uh, Re rehabilitation guidelines you saw before with some additions because they're now wanting to remove the doors and so we had some that you didn't see before about uh, that you should retain the openings doors and windows so I wanted to uh, pull up the new visuals which is um, we had some elevation drawings that show where those doors are and the balconies. The ladder is up here at the top. Staff had no issue with removing the ladder at all. Um, and then they provided the, their, what they wanted to do. And so then they had a ex picture of existing conditions and then proposed conditions so that you can see what the change would be to that facade. Um, so as referenced under the site history, this building was formally listed in the National Register of Historic Places and has been recognized by the city's Historic Preservation Commission as a historic landmark and is widely recognized as one of Oklahoma City's most outstanding pieces of architecture. You might recall this was our first concrete building, um, which I didn't know until I started researching and discussing this building with Katie. Um, the intent of the design ordinance is to retain character-defining features and historic and architectural resources and to ensure those features are preserved. The building conservation guidelines go into additional detail stating that historic features generally and balconies specifically should be retained, repaired when necessary and replaced in kind if removal is required. And so staff has not changed their view on that since the 
November, our staff report is the same as it was before. Um, so the new information that was provided by Miles and Associates that was included in your packet talked about the existing corroded concrete um, and their concern. There is an, a known situation and there's an unknown situation. And they went into detail about they weren't sure what they would get into if they were going to be removing and replacing. Staff believes the balconies and doors are significant character defining features of the building and their removal would be detrimental to the architecture character of the structure. And in the case of the balconies, there could be a, a detriment to the physical condition of the building not knowing what they're going to get into when they cut them off from the building. Staff does not believe sufficient evidence has been provided to justify removal of all the balconies and doors or to, re or to support removal without reinstallation of a matching feature. We recommend that the applicant work with staff to incorporate the repair and retention of the balconies or reinstallation of the balconies that replicate the existing feature and the retention or replacement in kind of the doors. So with that in mind, staff's recommendation is to continue the application to the March 19th meeting so that the applicant can pursue repair and retention or reconstruction of the balconies and doors and the treatment of the point of attachment for the balconies to the building so as not to cause further damage by exposing concrete to the elements. Do we have any comments or questions for staff? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, for the record, my name is Corey Bates, 1516 Northwest 36th Street. I'm here speaking on behalf of the applicant uh, on this proposal. So um, I'd like to talk about what structural re review and structural analysis has occurred since uh, the meeting two months ago, um, what options have been explored uh, as far as how to move forward, uh, and then talk about the building uh, architecturally as well. Uh, but first, I do want to reiterate from the meeting two months ago that the crux of this is a, is a life safety concern. Uh, the structural analysis and the chief inspector both have uh, determined that there's no immediate threat of the balconies collapsing, uh, but there is um, corroded rebar out there. There is uh, loose concrete. Um, this all started because a piece of concrete fell off uh, and hit the road below, or hit one of the balconies below, I should say. So the applicant is, is um, very aware of the life safety uh, concerns included in this and would like to um, address those as soon as possible. Um, I also want to um, point out again that the balconies are not in use. Um, the, they have not been in use for a number of years. Um, the doors that are on the exterior of the building are, are lock solid. They're non-operable. And inside the building, those openings are walled off. So there is, um, the balconies are not functional. They're not being used and because there is an access, easy access to them, they are difficult to maintain uh, as well. And so we're getting to this point. So um, since the, the last meeting, the design team has re reviewed both repairing and replacement options. So in the, in the approach of repairing the balconies, that would entail removing any loose concrete uh, that is found and looking for corroded rebar, removing that corroded rebar, replacing that corroded rebar, and repouring the concrete. And based on visual inspection, uh, structurally of these balconies, there's enough loose concrete and corroded rebar that to repair them, we would need to take out large portions of these balconies um, to the point where you're no longer even repairing it, we're entering the replacement realm. Um, additionally, in the repair option, um, that the repair option would solve the day one, the current issue of having loose concrete 
Um, but long term, um, it still has the potential to, we, we still have the potential of coming back to this issue down the road. Um, so in that regard, we then looked at our replacement options and we looked at both coming back with uh, concrete balconies to match exactly what's there, as well as metal frame balconies of the same configuration, size, appearance. So in both cases, uh, the existing balconies would be saw cut off and any corroded rebar found would need to be addressed and potentially tracked into the building. And this is where uh, it becomes problematic in that once with a 100-year-old structure, um, once you pull on that thread, you know, working with these old buildings, they tend to unravel, the issues tend to unravel, and uh, could become problematic in that we need to chase that corroded rebar into the building. And suddenly this goes from addressing the balconies into opening up the building further and not having an endpoint for the issues that get uncovered. Um. Uh, and so it would be a very heroic effort to, to come back and attach to the building and again to do so for balconies that are not even being used as balconies. <clears throat> and so the proposal that's in place is to, to remove those balconies, um, remove the doors that are in those openings. Um, as Once we cut off the balconies, that threshold condition um, would need to get it be addressed at the doors. In addition to visually, we wouldn't want to leave floating doors in space. Um, so the the proposal is to infill those with brick and paint them to match the existing building. Um, so this, this proposal addresses the current life safety concern, uh, both today and in the future. Uh, it limits the potential for exposing additional issues with the 100-year-old structure and, and opening up the building more than we need to. And then it also provides the most direct approach for long-term maintenance of the building. So from, from an architectural standpoint, um, the owner and the design team are very, very sensitive to the significance of this building. Um, like Laura said, it's the first uh, reinforced concrete building in Oklahoma City. Uh, it's the first building in Oklahoma City with an elevator, uh, and it's the city's first skyscraper. Uh, in addition to that, the architectural character has a direct lineage to Louis Sullivan, uh, and that's um, certainly represented on the building's detailing. Um, in the case of these alleys, uh, in, in the case of these balconies, um, they are located on the alley side of the building, the north side of the building. And while they are quite visible from the public right of way, I would offer that they're not character defining elements. They are characteristics of this building, but not necessarily the character-defining elements. The character-defining elements of this building would be the, uh, the terracotta detailing and ornamentation at the base and the roof of the building, uh, the extensive ground-level lobby and the detailing that is, is on that, um, the, the overall scale, mass, and configuration of the building, and then also the, the signature signs on the rooftop. Um, those are, those are what I would offer as the character-defining elements of this building. And it, the, the balconies are, again, visible from the public right away, but if you drive past this building, if you walk past this building, if you experience this building, I personally, I don't experience the balconies. I experience everything else on the east and south facades of this building. And so, Taking off the balconies would change the appearance of the north alley side elevation, but I would offer that they, they don't change the character of the building. Um, so with that, we are, um, we are again uh, applying to remove the balconies and infill them with brick and paint that brick to match. So I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, about that. 
there any questions? Yes. I, I've been trying to balance the two uh, with the organization I'm with. We always weigh very heavily on the rights of the property owner as we look at different types of ordinances and regulations. And what I have been having a tough time getting my hands around is that I, I do think that there are some character defining elements. I mean, having grown up here, that is one of the things you do notice about the building. Uh, I agree with you that I'm not necessarily uh, sold on the fact that if it was removed, it would really change the uh, character visual of the building and you wouldn't get the historical nature of it. But I am concerned about the potential cost that's involved and the risk as far as both the safety to the community and what is the potential uh, resolution. Uh, you, I'm assuming, have had uh, engineers and others look into this as far as potential options. And there is a major concern that as you get involved in trying to repair and renovate, that there is the risk that you will find or even do some things to deteriorate uh, the building even more. Uh, and the staff is concerned that uh, because they believe this is a character defining element that we need to find a way forward. And I'm assuming you guys have had conversations. So going to the staff, based on the information that has been presented, uh, uh, is it that you think there are alternatives or there is another strategy because we're being asked to extend this to give you guys time in order to do this. I'm not exactly sure what that is. So I, I would like more clarification, I guess, from both parties. You're currently not asking for a continuance, correct? Correct. Uh, right now, yes. Um, so, so we have not had uh, conversations with staff yet. Um, we went, we went through and, and did the structural analysis um, that that can be done uh, without opening up the building further. Uh, and to the to the point of doing further damage, this the proposed option of cutting them off and bricking them in we see as the least invasive and the uh, the option that. Um, long term prevents any further issues from coming up. Um, that removing the balconies and not trying to put a load back on the existing structure is the best way to allow the existing structure to just remain as is. Right. So, from staff's perspective, it's the known versus the unknown. And it's possible because we don't know that they cut those off and it's like, oh, that's where the corrosion stops. I'm just saying that's a possibility, which means it could very easily, they could reconstruct uh, a balcony without the concrete because we had talked about that previously that we don't have a problem with them being reconstructed without the concrete, removing that weight and being able to put that back up on the building. Um, so yeah, and, and so there is the potential that we cut off the balcony and there isn't more corrosion found. Um, and I think if, if we were talking about one balcony, it, it would be maybe worth taking that risk. Um, but we are talking about 11 balconies on a 100-year-old structure. And so the, the, the odds of getting the ideal in all scenarios is I don't believe that to be, those odds to be good. Okay, I'm agree about the concrete because I know a lot more about concrete. My concern, my question is why you don't keep the reels, the hand reels? I mean, take off the, the concrete, all of them, the doors looks better, but keep the uh, is still handrails. So we, we looked at an option where <clears throat> the, the balcony would, wouldn't be concrete, but it would be framed out of steel. And in that case, the, the, the handrails would be part of that. Uh, and while that is less of a load on the existing building than 
than a concrete solution, it's still a load. We, we would still need to take this balcony and, and attach it to the existing structure. And so it's, it's more about the, the capacity of the existing structure than, than what, we're, what we're tacking onto it. And I think I asked a question, because initially I thought, why can't you just cut off the concrete and leave the rails? And I think I was told that it's, in, it's integral. It's, it's, it's all, you, you can't just remove the concrete and leave the rails because the rails are in the concrete. Correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So the whole thing has to come down. Um, and, and so that, that's one thing to consider in this. Because I thought that would be the best solution, just take the concrete out and leave the, leave the railings up there. So uh, typically I'd ask all the architects on the panel, but since you're the only one today, <laughs> you get my questions. Um, being a real estate person, I, I can't judge this. So could you tell me what your opinion is as far as you know, the value of those balconies and their contribution to the historical design of it. So I, I had the same level of, of kind of going back and forth in what I was going to say. Um, and I, I appreciate the fact that you said that this is a characteristic element, but maybe not a character defining element. I think that helps me in what I am thinking. But what I am seeing is now in the location where there was character, on this facade. Now there is the absence of character and there is the illusion of the fact that there was no character to start from. Typically in historic conditions, we would not want to take something and make it disappear. We might call attention to the fact that it is a non-historic element, but we would not make it go away. So I think the part that I'm most struggling with is the absence of character on a facade that that was really the only character. I agree with the fact that it is the alley and therefore it has less of a consideration than the primary facades and I also agree with the fact that it's not the character defining elements that you described. I do feel like some type of character could be put in these areas so visually when you go by you don't necessarily feel like that's a primary element on the building, but visually, either by tone or shadow, something is in the location of the previous element that calls attention to the fact that there was something there and it's no longer there. It's not trying to recreate. I agree entirely with what you said about the fact that it's going to be like pulling the thread on the sweater. I would not want to try to repair these concrete um, landings and it seems like the railings are loaded on the landings and maybe just pinned to the building so I I feel like that the, the concrete landing does need to come off well you'll you'll identify something there as to whether or not um, you have solid something to attach to but even then you'll have the the steel exposed without proper coverage and then there becomes the effort of how that gets dealt with, which can be very expensive. So I'm not necessarily even feeling like something visually needs to project out from the building, but it seems to me like something needs to well, be there. In okay, the so let me ask you that, because I'm looking at this, sure. and I do see that there are characters. What were you looking at? I'll, I'll, um, this one? That one, okay, okay. so let me, let me I go. Do, I do see that there are things that wrap around from the east side and certain character issues. So when you... When you say that side doesn't have any character, are you saying the whole side or that little piece where the balconies used to be? I see the, wow. the character, but it's not the entire facade. It's more like just how the corner was addressed. It's a, it's a, it's a continuation of the character on the primary facade that just doesn't terminate on an outside corner. This element seems to be the most shadow play on that mm -hmm. overall facade. And again, actually, whenever I saw this image, and saw the tonal difference, it, it felt better than the, than the rendering that has it all painted mm -hmm. monochromatically to where it kind of goes away. So there's a part of me that feels like something could just pay a small degree of homage to what was a previous element with, without necessarily recreating the well, balcony. That goes back to another question I had for you, Corey, is the single window that would be left is that is there something really behind there, like a hallway or a room? Or? There are doors. There's actually two doors. No, the oh. window to the to the left of those. Oh, that's that's actually in a room, I think yeah. now. Oh, it is. Okay. Because originally this was built as an office building, 
Right. So it was renovated and made into the a hotel. I just, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, I just wish there was some way to make the doors sort of reappear. I guess it wouldn't be practical, functional, but, but um, at least it wouldn't be that blank kind of look that you're talking about, Tony, I think, that it's just one big so, blob. So it, it's worth clarifying some of the detail in the approach. So each one of these openings, the windows and the doors, have a brick arch detail at the top of those openings. Those would stay. Those would be intact. Additionally, when, when the, the door opening is infilled with brick, you will have a clean joint uh, along those edges. We, we don't intend to um, weave the new brick with the existing brick. We intend to simply just fill the opening that's there. So visually, um, and the rendering being so far away, you don't catch this much detail, but you would still see the, the arched uh, brick at the top of the opening, and you would see the, the line work that is the door, existing door opening. And, and I think, are the, are the doors on the first floor these staying? Yes. Okay, because this makes it look like they're not. Oh, that yeah, that's and and I I, I don't know that's not going to make much of a difference. Yeah, no, we're we're yeah we're not touching the ground level doors at all, it's just the balconies from the second floor. Yeah, I I think from the standpoint that the whole thing is going to be the same color, you're proposing the same color. Those archers are just going to blend in. You're not going to see them. However, if you were proposing, based on a comment I think the chair made, if not that I'm necessarily supporting that, but if you did an infill where it was a different color and it's the same size as the door that had been there, you wouldn't lose the size of that feature if that's where you guys are headed. I was just going to, the, the whole trompe l'oeil, the fool of the eye, the being able to do it a different way could be a possibility here if in fact that's where you're headed with not having something hanging off the building. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm just seeing if there visually could be something in a location where previously something, I mean, that's what the debate of this is. Like right. you said, it was character, and now in that specific location, there is kind of no character. So, I mean, and if the balconies were removed, but the doors were sort of defined a little more, would that be a better solution in your eyes? if the doors remained in place? Well, or, yeah, somehow in place or defined in some way so that the existence of those doors is still there, even though it would be kind of... The only way that I would see that occurring is with some type of a Romeo balcony scenario where it a appears like those doors could open. I mean, that's, that's adding a lot of cost to create a condition that is different than what was there historically and maybe in, 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 in actually inaccurate because that's not the, but the function of it is currently. So there's a part of me that would not go down that path of creating something false just for the sake, whereas just creating some degree of delineation of the previous element <coughs> could be enough to respect the fact that something was there previously without getting into the expense of recreating something that's not going to be accessible and will be a long-term maintenance item in the future. So the, the, the proposal includes taking those doors out and then filling that in because um, we didn't want to take the balconies off and have floating doors. We felt that that was more, that was, but um, in, in infilling those openings, um, you know, we could certainly look at a detail that creates a shadow line in the brick that reinforces that that um, that outline that was once there so you can clearly see that there was once these these door openings there maybe i don't know a deep a little b and put back part of the handrail close to the wall i don't know it's because it's to me it's the same thing looks like a something missing there. It's very white. It's very. All the buildings have a lot of windows, a lot of 
more than windows openings. So this part looks like plain, like nothing there. So it's something to dress it, this area. Yeah, and, I mean, it, it, even more than a reveal, when we infill this opening, I mean, we could set back the infill, you know, an inch or two, and then the, the whole the whole opening would, you'd catch a little shadow on that reveal to express where those door openings But then you're going to gonna also create that floating door up there that you were talking about, right? No, we're, we're trying to avoid that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, so we would, we would infill the door opening with brick, but instead of putting the new brick flush with the existing, we would put the new brick in slightly to give a reveal to, so that that outline is, is more visual. So going back to the, um, where are all my notes here, sorry. Um, going back to the, the balconies themselves. So the balconies, they're not salvageable at all. Is that where the corrosion is with the? So the, the way that the handrails are attached to the balcony are, they are um, steel handrails that, are, that were set when the concrete was cast. Right. And so a lot of the corrosion and the, the loosening of the concrete and the delamination is actually happening at those connection points. At the connection points. And so the... Sorry, they don't have any picture close to the, the balconies, the, I mean the, the handrail, the, the steel, to see is something saving there? So yeah, these these are probably the the best images that we have that shows how that handrail, uh, the base of the handrail wraps the corner, and within that there'll there's steel that's going into the concrete to grab onto it. Um, the handrails are very rusted, um, both at that connection point and then throughout. Um, so I don't think that salvaging them would be the most efficient approach uh, as far as having to go in and do the labor of removing all of that st uh, corrosion before repainting. Um, yeah. And in one case, the railings are totally missing. Yeah, they're up on like seven or eight or yeah, something, yeah. kind of high. So I was looking at the pictures from what's already there, and I keep thinking that if that can be removed, Absolutely. Just get rid of it and replace it with something maybe that can be uh, maintenance easier throughout however long they need to be there. I mean, I just would hate to see that being gone. And when I look at the pictures that it's completely gone, yeah, you can see the doors. So the big dilemma would be they're gone, but, you know, there's, there's nothing. It almost feels like it's, you know, something's missing that should be there historical to the building. So I think that, you know, not that many people aren't going to notice. I probably will notice for the rest of my life now that you pointed it out. <laughs> sure. You know? Yeah. For me, it would be like, I know those were removed and now they're no longer there. But if, if the doors were kept just like they are and that was completely removed, I wouldn't have a problem but have it replaced with something even much simpler, much less invasive to the building. I think that would be something that, it doesn't even have to have concrete, maybe just not even have um, a firm base to walk on because you really can't walk on them, but maybe something that it's just metal, I mean, I'm not an architect, but something that resembles a balcony of some sort, just something simpler. I think that that would be a great idea. But Just for clarification is that I review the information about the structural components of the bal ba balconies and how they interact with the building. Uh, when I look at that, and, and I think we're all saying the same thing, is we definitely like to see something that's there because it does look like that something disappeared. What about, because when you look at the design, uh, some kind of window facade or something that might work there? Uh, it would be defining, and I think you could do it in a way that would look, in my opinion, uh, architecturally consistent with what's already there, but wouldn't cost as much and would be as much to maintain. Has that been reviewed as a potential option? Uh, to 
So in that, in that, if I'm hearing you correctly, so we've got a door opening. Mm -hmm. We would fill that door opening mm -hmm. with brick up until right. that window line, mm -hmm. and then put in a a, a window. Mm -hmm. um, I'll actually make a comment on that. Okay. Uh, um, so we've done some national, I mean, and I'm sure that you have too, we've done some National Park Service projects and whenever we have a historic opening in a building that previously had a detailed divided light or double hung or some type of historic type of window system that we're not going back with a truly accurate to the original building mm -hmm. system, we have been given an option to put a very modern, very simple narrow profiled frame single piece of glass in that location and it could be a spandrel glass or it could be some kind of a glass that you just get the outline and that's kind of what we're talking about in all of these is that tonally we see the difference that would be another solution and in those cases we wouldn't have the balcony situation i i can see situations where we would have a romeo balcony style that the balcony is very close or closer you could even use the existing, but it's totally decorative. The sides are gone, and the front just allows some delineation with some tonal difference in the original hole, in the original opening. Um, but if, if it was going to go back with the window, I wouldn't try to false um, create a condition replicating an adjacent window. I'd rather just see a single piece of glass in the original opening as an option as well. Okay, so first let me let me check with the owner if that's an option. Or is that so? Um, is there more discussion about what this, or is there any discussion from the audience regarding this item as well? So I guess I think it sounds like we've maybe developed two options in that infilling the infilling the door openings with brick but setting it back slightly to emphasize the outline of that opening or potentially infilling those door openings with a simplified window version the you see the um, Nancy this picture and you see the frame in the windows is different color. I'm not sure what material is there, or see it's a little darker, so that you make that kind of emphasis with the a little deep. Maybe it's working with the brick infill option. Yes, or? yes, it's only make an emphasis of the open with the frame around the windows, it's a little darker. Right. The arc and size, so maybe it looks better and don't look like black or something. It might be in the detailing of how you reveal the edge, how you turn mm -hmm. the corner, how you create the offset. That could be some subtle detailing that would allow that to emphasize the location of the previous element right um, so is there is there a path to um, leaving today with an option that is acceptable so there, there could be a couple of paths that would be identified as acceptable and then coordinated with staff is that it? okay so, and then you could determine which of the two would be your approach. Um, the, the, the one for the, I'm, I'm clear on the, on the one with the glass. It seems like a very simple solution. What I'm not clear is in the recess, if the committee feels like some type of even indication or hint of a balcony element should be in, present in that. And that would be, someone would have to make a motion as to whether or not that scenario had an element in 
included in it. So it, am I hearing that what you're thinking of doing is actually making a motion that has more than one option available for them to get the end result that you're looking for? And then they would, you'd specify those. I think we just listed potentially three. And then the applicant would work with staff when they choose which one of those options. Is, is that what you're thinking? Okay. Yeah, and I do think that the options that we're talking about, all the options include removing the balconies for the purpose of what, one of, that was one of the things that was discussed previously was we did not want to remove the balcony without an indication of what would be replaced. So now we're getting to the point where we've got some replacement options that are out there, but all the replacement options seem to give you the opportunity to remove the balcony, which is what was the intent in the first place. You'll identify the level of corrosion. You'll identify whether or not you're going to push that back into the building. Some of those things will start to reveal itself, but you'll have some options available to you. So may I have a motion? Uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> well, are we in a, I mean, or are, are, is there further discussion? I'm just going to say where I, where I land on this, and then we can kind of, that would kind of help us mm -hmm. before we just waste time with motions. Um, I'm kind of, I mean, I, I kind of, being a real estate person, I tend to, tend to understand the owner's point of view that if, um, you know, it, adding the balconies, replacing the balconies, uh, it, when it's, not necessarily character defining. It, it seems could be excessive and even a long-term maintenance issue. Um, so I do like the idea of still defining those more than what you presented. And um, I was thinking glass also, um, anything that kind of defines it without changing historically what they were. I do, while it'd be great if there was some sort of Juliet balcony that mimicked the old balconies, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's crucial for me. It's not. Because um, it just, realistically, it's it just probably outrageously expensive and another maintenance issue in the future. So that's kind of where I fall. I don't know where everybody else. I think I agree with you. Um, just having a defining, I would even say, just something that states that it's gone, but it was it was well replaced with something that doesn't seem like anything is gone. Just something resembles, you know, even the door, the windows that are there, if you could make the doors look something similar to the windows around it, it would just blend in. That would still look okay to me. Like, it, you know, the, yeah, it's romantic to think of balconies and stuff like that, and it's historical. Um, well, fire escape. I'm thinking of balconies, because everybody's talking about balconies. Um, but if they don't have to be there, I think that, you know, something that is just, it, it looks like it belongs there. That's what I'm trying to say. And something replaceable, similar to the windows, would still look acceptable. Um, I was looking at the windows, I was like, what if they just look like that, but elongated, like the door size? I think that would be perfect. And not even to have a balcony. Because if it doesn't have to be there, then just make it look like that. Um, only the frame. Yeah, the frame. And the little dip. I guess it's cheaper solution. Easier. So are we kind of all in agreement that we can live without the balconies being replaced? I think no. so. I agree. Right. So you were saying they would actually put a frame, not just do it with paint in different colors yes. of paint. We would like them to mimic, mimic the existing windows. windows. So to blend in. In that scenario, so, so it would be a... May I offer something else? Um, the, the, the crux of this right now is removing the balconies. Mm -hmm. The owner wants to proceed with that and eliminate the concern that's out there. Is, is, is it an option to approve the demolition of the balconies and have us come back and present uh, another uh, proposed solution that does not include new balconies. I think that's entirely that's appropriate. I that I agree with that as well. Okay. 
sounds like we're in agreement, then I will make a motion. The Jones Trujillo motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion Thank carries. You. Thank you very much. Item seven is other business. We have one item on the agenda, and that is CE01012 at 1000 Park Place. The applicant's present. And the applicant is present, yes. So uh, occasionally you get an item which you're going to be making a recommendation on, which is what this one is. It's a, a request to close the south 10 feet of the street right of way for parked place so a few months ago you guys it was very exciting we had a rezoning application before you and this was the first piece we had a block rezoned into the downtown design district so we actually have a bump out now that's between western and classen um, so we increased the size of the downtown design district and you might recall what's proposed here is a, a housing project that's going in um, i think I don't know, I think Ian came and spoke. It's, it's, it's actually the Housing Authority doing this project. So now that they've gotten all their surveying in, their footprint, um, they determined they needed some more uh, area for the footprint of the building that they've, they're proposing for the unit count they're proposing. And so this is a 60-footer right away, and they're requesting that the south 10 feet, as you can see here, is closed and they plan on going to district court to vacate it um, and so in the staff report the the only the main concern staff had is we want to make sure that we have enough to be able to do the streetscape the current sidewalk is within that 10 feet so obviously they're going to end up redoing the sidewalk we want to have street trees that type of thing and so with we had more than one meeting with the applicants Wow, you guys know how to clear a room. Um, and they uh, uh, indicated, well, first let me just say that to the east, Park Place goes half a block and then it, it goes no more because there's a building there. So it's not that this is this major through street because it's not. Um, it does continue on to the west within the subdivision. Um, the um, traffic management, and I included that in the staff report, traffic management um, stated to me that they look on this just as a typical neighborhood street and that you can get away with a 50-foot right away, not you don't need a 60-foot right away. Um, and what they have confirmed is that we have a curb line, which is kind of underneath my hand across here. The curb line is not moving. The curb line is staying, and that was one of our concerns. And we, because we wanted to make sure they weren't going to do inset parking spaces, and then we would really have nothing. We'd have no green, no street trees, or anything. Currently, parking is allowed on the um, south side of the street. It's not allowed on the north side of the street. That could change. Currently, there's a lot of um, driveways into what used to be there, and it's no longer there. And so that would all be um, redone when they come through for the project. So we're looking at getting about nine feet where we could have the sidewalk, we'd have room for the street trees. And with that, staff was very comfortable with what they were proposing with the understanding that they're going to have to show us they can make the streetscape work when they come back with the project because you haven't seen that yet. And that will be coming in, you know, in the next few months you'll be seeing that project. So uh, with that being said, sorry, I didn't even look at my staff report. I was going off the top of my head. Um, staff is recommending that you provide a recommendation of approval to the Planning Commission for the request to close the south 10 feet of Park Place between Northwestern and North Classen. 
I had one phone call last week from someone who got the notice because we send notices to property owners within 10 feet. He was really confused. He has a business on the north side and he thought they were going to totally close the road. So I explained what they were doing and then at that point his questions were just more about the development and when we'd see it and he was kind of excited that there was going to be money in his uh, in his neighborhood and I mean he's looking at something that's going to actually help his property values because of the money that's going to be invested in the development so that was the only phone call I had gotten on it do we have any questions for staff are we aware of any utilities within this 10 feet I am not aware I'm sure the applicant probably okay. would be if there is something Hi, Tim Johnson, Johnson Associates, Mark Zidzow here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, we did uh, 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 inquire, sorry, uh, with all the public utilities, there are no utilities in this 10 feet. Uh, and not to regurgitate staff's comments, I will add that the current Park Place Street is actually built north of the center line of the 60 foot right of way. So it's not going to look any, it's not going to look odd. It'll actually line it up better uh, and and we would agree that we'll provide five foot of landscaping and five foot sidewalk as part of our final plan which will come back to you uh, so this is like our third time on this project to be here uh, the uh, and and what really brought this about was in the original preliminary layouts that were done by the architect he had used the dimensions off the county's website and it was in error by 10 feet and so that's what's brought this forward rather than lose rooms in the uh, project uh, we thought this would be a better solution um, but uh, Laura covered it all it's gonna the streetscape is gonna look much much better because we're getting rid of all all but one driveway on that south side of the street and that'll be the ingress and egress into the underground parking or under building parking and we will not need any on-street parking do we have any questions for the applicant? No utilities, but no easements either currently in that 10 feet. That's that would correct. Need to be abandoned. No additional easements. Okay. The right of way is an easement. When we vacate it, it goes away. Thank you. Isn't there's just anybody in the audience that wants to speak to this? Do we have any questions? And if not, I'll entertain a motion. A motion to approval of the Planning Commission for request to close the south 10 feet of the park place between Northwestern Avenue and North Class Boulevard. Second. The Trujillo Bates motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 8 is communications, and we have several items under communications. Are there any that need any specific concerns? Do you have any okay. questions? Any questions about them? Okay. And B is comments from planning department staff. First, uh, we have a meeting next month because you continued an item to February back in December, I think. So please check your calendar. Um, as a few of you know, I had to make calls yesterday to make sure we had a quorum. So please make sure you're, you're available and we'll be getting in touch with you to uh, Confirm that, and there's more items than just the one that you continued. So it's not like there's just one. There's, we're looking at four or five that are on the agenda. The next thing, since Lisa's not here, I will have to roll out. Don't forget, January 31st, the committee and commission um, training. Hopefully you guys have been able to confirm with Paula that you're coming, you've got it on your calendar, and you're excited about what you're going to learn this year because this will be Lisa's last year of leading it, so we need to uh, learn what we can from her. So I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing it on my calendar, uh, the 20th? What's the 31st? For the oh, you're yes. talking about the February meeting? Yeah, I don't know if that invite may need to be extended. Y'all don't have enough time? Oh. <laughs> okay. I, I you, have oh, you do? Yeah, all the women have it. <laughs> okay. 
I'm staying out of that. Maybe my term's up. <laughs> I know we handed out the calendars at the last month's meeting, and it just dawned on me that I intended to bring one because you were sick last month, and so I, didn't ha I don't physically have that. So I'll make sure I email that to you. Um, when okay. Are, when are we voting for a new chair and vice chair? Um, Paula, I think it's May, isn't it? For them? I think you guys are May. You serve and you serve until you are um, reappointed yeah. or replaced. Are there any comments from committee members? <laughs> are there any comments? Okay, next meeting date is February 20th. We do have items on the agenda and we are adjourned.